Welcome to Redefine Your Worthiness with Karel Richards. Get ready to step into your power to unleash your true potential. Karel is a rapid transformational practitioner specializing in childhood trauma. While also being a mental health advocate, Karel has embraced her own personal struggles to transform herself, to turn her pain into her greatest gift. Her mission is to provide the ultimate safe space to understand and support your most vulnerable moments. Get ready for real and raw conversations that will inspire, empower, and encourage full self-expression and self-acceptance. Redefine Your Worthiness with Karel Richards starts now. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is your host, Karel. Welcome back to Redefine Your Worthiness with me. And today we are kicking off episode number four with things being a little bit different. And that's okay, because you know what? Life is happening and we just got to roll with the punches sometimes. So our guest today... I was telling her earlier that this conversation is well overdue and her son actually is joining us for that conversation. So I'm excited for that. And there he goes. So I'm going to welcome Shana to the conversation and she, yeah. she'll do the honor of introducing herself, of course. <laughs> Hi, Carol and everyone listening. Um, just love you. And uh, my name is Shana Robinson, and I am the owner of the Branding Boutique, as well as the sub-brand, The Epic Initiative. I, my foundation as, is as an image consultant, but I've been doing business coaching, life coaching for the past decade, which is kind of crazy to say. <laughs> um, and You're I'm aging really yourself. <laughs> yeah, that, that is all right. That is all right. <laughs> I wear it proudly. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's, it's funny because the way that we met was very interesting to me. I think I heard about you before I even met you. And then I happened to just show up at an event and you were there mm -hmm. and I saw you on the, 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 the dance floor. And I was like, oh my God, she's me. And you said the <laughs> same thing to me. <laughs> yes. so I was like, okay. But you know what's funny about that? And maybe it's not even funny to the um the listeners, but in that moment, I was in a stage of my life where I wasn't really sure what the direction was. But I know when I saw you, you showed me a part of me that I wanted to be. And at first I was like, shit, I don't know what this feels like. I don't know what this feeling is. And at first I was like, is it jealousy? Is it envy? And then mm. in just processing it, because I'm, you know, I'm a processor. I yes. was like, no, she's actually showing you the part of you that you're not showing up as, you wow. know, you speak so eloquently, you speak when you feel like you need something to say, you're, you're going to say it, right? Yes. If you see that there is an, an avenue for the conversation to go in a different direction, you present it. And that, I, I saw that and I was in amazement and I admired that about you. So I thought, who else was I going to have this conversation with as it relates to the why? <laughs> because I'm like, I know she knows her why based on our conversation before, but I'd love for you to share that with the audience members. Sure, sure. And thank you for that. And yes, just for everybody listening, literally, we were two peas in a pod on the dance floor. I was like, oh, she looks good. She dressed nice. She... she has all this energy. Who is this woman? And so, you know, we had the privilege of being able to connect after that so my why um you know both of our families are from the west indies um my family's from trinidad and has migrated to canada 52 years ago in february yes yeah, so it's been a really really long time i'm the baby of four children and my mom back in trinidad um was an educator and that is actually you know a job that's held in quite high esteem um in the caribbean and so when she came over and followed my dad to Canada, you know, my mom, of course, they don't always recognize your education when you come um, from foreign. So, you know, she went and worked a series of jobs, but really sacrificed and gave herself um, really, you know, sacrificed and gave herself the, the role and responsibility of being a wife and a mother, right? And even though she always worked and always sacrificed, I look at my mom and I'm like, she never became the woman she was supposed to. 
you know, my mom's 73, just turned 73 last month. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, oh, and oh. she is, whoops, she is such a brilliant, brilliant woman. But the reality is that, like, I feel like she had so much more in her that she never got to explore because it was always about what does my husband need? What do my kids need? And to this day, my mom sacrifices for us continuously. Mm. And so when I started my business, I really was like, I'm my mom's wildest dream, right? I am the last one. She had me in her 40s, like, I am supposed to do amazing things here. I don't follow all of the rules. I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Um, but I want her to be able to have some experiences as a result of my hard work. And so mom was actually supposed to be here in Honolulu with us right now. Yeah. But due to some medical reason, she wasn't able to come. Okay. Okay. Right? <laughs> but, but my why really is that and this is where Epic was birthed, is that we deserve to be unforgettable. Like yeah. we need to have our own money. We need to have our own options. And that doesn't mean that we don't need men. We absolutely need men in our lives. But as a woman, you have to be sound in who you are. And it was really disheartening for me to hear my mom later on in life say things like, I don't know who I am outside of this. And I don't know what my likes and my desires are. And that she didn't get to always experience things that she wanted to. Yeah. So my why really is making sure that women who start businesses, one, know who they are. Yeah. Two, um, are able to, you know, we're going to multitask here as a mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that we, you know, we're able to have a vehicle that we can feel confident about in our businesses. Um, and three, that we get to live out our lives work. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. And I I admire that too, because I think that's something that as children of immigrants, we, we want to do things differently. Mm -hmm. So when you say, okay, I saw that my mom had to essentially become invisible. She didn't mm -hmm. get the chance to even step into her power. It almost forces you to be like, I'm never going to be that. I want to, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not from a space of disgust or shame. It's just I can see what it has done to her and I don't want that. Right. Absolutely. And it's so funny because people say to me all the time now that I'm a mother, they're like, Shana, you're out dancing every Wednesday night. You go to the gym. Cairo goes with you. Like he has not slowed me down. He is an asset to me. Right. Yeah. But he has not slowed me down at all. Yeah. And they're like, I really admire that about you. And I think sometimes when we are doing what's authentically right for us, right? I always say I was Shayna before I was Cairo's mom. Yes. So the things that Shayna did and who Shayna was should not change because I have this addition to my identity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting to see that there's some people who are like, I don't know how you leave your kid that much. And I don't know how you do blah, blah, blah. And then there's this whole other handful that are like, man, when I have kids, I hope to be just like you. Yeah. So how do you manage that? Because it goes from one extreme to the next where they're like, I don't know. And they're like, oh, I admire you for that. How do you deal with the people that say, how do you like, how are you so separate from your, your child? Does it make you feel any sort of way? Does it ever make you feel guilty? Or you just no. know that, hey, you're, this is your way of doing things? This is, you know, my partner is U.S. Air Force. That's why we're out here in Hawaii. So the reality Yay! is that, you know, I am kind of, I, I'm not going to call myself a single parent, but I am predominantly raising him by myself um, in terms of face-to-face -face time, right? Mm -hmm. And so that means that I needed to have a village right away, right? So when we found out that we were expecting, I was like, no, I'm going back home because my mom is there, my sister is there, my friends are there, and I have such an amazing support group. So mm -hmm. if I'm out dancing, I know that my child is with somebody that I trust. And sometimes, yes, you need babysitters. And yes, sometimes your family can't always help you and everything like that. Yeah. But we've still been able to create a network of people that I do trust for Cairo to be around. The other side of this is that like, I don't ever want to shelter my child, right? So while we're out here, even 
Cairo's swimming in the ocean and I let him go. He's doing all of these things that create an independent individual. I don't see myself being a hover parent and there's nothing wrong with that. But I didn't even know that I would be this type of parent. You know, he fell the other day and I was like, okay, what is he going to do? Right. He got up and he went about his business and it was a pretty bad fall, but I have to learn my child. Exactly. So that I'm not imposing my fears or concerns or different things on him and stifling who he is as an individual. Right. So for me, I just say, (laughs) I love that. I just say that at the end of the day, you know, like to each his own, I don't know what anybody else's experiences were and why they are raising their children the way that they are. But, you know, I remember hearing somebody say that they had never left their child for like the first two years. And I was like, I think the first time I left the country, he was two months. Like, you know, nothing, nothing wrong. Yeah. And as long as I'm not judging you, you shouldn't judge me. That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we may not even have control over what they do. Um, Not even me. We don't have control over what they do. But I think what I'm hearing is, so you knew what your why was, and then you seek support. Yeah. Okay. And after you, you, you sought out support, you got it. What else did you do in, in essence to kind of make sure that that why was brought to fruition, essentially? I think the, the why is for, your why doesn't necessarily change, but the vision evolves, right? So I had to be able to, through this journey of becoming a mother and business, you know, we had the best year financially while I was pregnant. And then your first year of being a mom, you're like, man. I got a lot of responsibility. So, you know, actually on the 15th is one year since I started going out dancing on Wednesday nights at Soul Supreme, which is local to um, Winnipeg, this amazing event. Um, But that was kind of where I was able to say to myself, like, okay, is business even working the way that I want it to? right? Where is resistance showing up in my life that is taking away from me being happy, me being present? Corral, even being out here has shown me I maybe work four hours a day when he does nap. And I'm like, oh, I'm never going back to (laughs) to the way it was. Yeah. It's also shown me that like, I can take care of my child and do this and not feel guilty. But I did have to make some shifts business wise. Yeah. Um, and that's where Epic Initiative really came in to to say, okay, I don't want to have deliverables that I need to create for people. I don't want to have the stress of needing to show up all of the time. So how do I create something that actually supports me being a more present mom and a more relaxed and enjoyable mom? Yeah. And how has that been for you thus far? Oh my God, really shifting things. Of course, any transition is challenging, right? So you have the like closing out of certain things. You have the reintroduction of who you are when people maybe know you in one way. But in terms of my mental health, in terms of like my energy, it feels more empowering than it ever did when I was working like a dog. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I think it's reconnecting also to that root of being from the West Indies. We're just, we're taught to work like a doc, essentially. And yeah. I'm sitting here, I, I, I remember being in that environment and I knew I was dying internally mm. and I just couldn't say anything because that was the norm. You right. know? So what really positioned you to step outside of what was seemingly normal to you? What was that, you know, light bulb moment for you? I don't even think that there was a light bulb moment. I I think that I'm very good at one, listening to myself, two, seeing what is happening naturally. I I really believe that like God and the universe is always working on my behalf. And sometimes, you know, I'm hard headed, so I don't listen the first time. So then, you know, they'll just crumble it for me. And I'm like, okay okay, cool. We're shifting. Like Epic was an idea over three years ago. 
the retreat that we're going to do here in Hawaii in October was an idea five years ago that I never pulled, you know, the trigger on. So I really just think that I'm becoming more in tune with what I actually want. Yeah. And, and just saying like, F it, you know what I mean? Like our lives are so, so short, so short. And I have a unique opportunity with the work that my partner does to be able to explore the world, you know, and do all of these things that not everybody has the opportunity to do. So if I've been so blessed with so many gifts and talents and opportunities, why am I not making the most out of that? Yeah. Like life, life will always have hard parts. It will always have challenging parts. And I think the, as, as I'm kind of talking it out, I think the light bulb was like, I don't, I just don't want to feel that weight anymore. Okay. Yeah. What was that weight for you? The weight for me has always been you know what the weight honestly was as much as I enjoyed you know having my son and everything like that when you are doing it by yourself to an extent and you're still working full time like I have no idea how single moms do it with multiple children's even I have no clue um and you know if I'm being really transparent and honest there was a point in time where I was like I don't enjoy being a mom and that's fair. But it, yeah, but it was because I was so used to the identity of Shayna, the business owner, and that being my first baby, that now it was like, no, you have to stop and you have to make him the priority. Yeah. And now even being with my partner, there's this whole other layer of he needs his time as well, right? Um and that attention and everything like that. So the weight was really like, how do I still maintain being myself, even though I'm creating space for it? When you have this whole other human being that you have to take care of, you still have bills that you need to pay. You still have clients that you need to serve. You still have a long distance relationship that you need to nurture. It's all of the things. Yeah. Right. Aging parents, aging parents, we ended up, um, right before, actually the day that Cairo came home, my dad also came home to stay with us because he had just suffered. We're not sure if it's a stroke or a seizure in front of us and went into hospital a week before I delivered. Right. So that transition to sell the house and do everything like that was happening when I was maybe like a week postpartum, like, um, you know, my mom's now experiencing her health thing. So when you have aging parents, um, there's all of these things that come into it and you're navigating all of that. So it's like, how do you stay sane in the midst of that? Because that's my question. (laughs) Like, how do you process or do you even get the chance to process those feelings that are coming up? Because you you have a child that's depending on you. You have to depend on you. And then you have a whole family depending on you. Like, how do you navigate that? So one thing that I, I, it's just in my DNA, I would say is like, I don't really stress. And if I do stress, then like, it's going to be really bad for a little bit. And then I can kind of snap out of it. So that's one. Um, But the reality is like, I can only control what I can control and I can only do what I can do. So, you know, at that point in time, we were doing really finan- really well financially in the business. So the help I could do during that time was I could financially float what was happening in that transition, right? I am not the detail-oriented person. That is my sister. So she was the one dealing with, you know, finding the homes and doctors and all this kind of stuff. I have a flexible schedule because I have my own business. So I can take you to the doctor's appointments. I can whatever. So I think the big thing is learn what role that you can play and be okay yeah. with playing that role. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is that I've never shied away from asking for help ever. I probably asked for help too much. <laughs> um, can we? You know, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm really good at that. So... <laughs> So, you know, like I never shy away from asking for help. Um, 
or what I need. And I'm very good at communicating. Like if I'm overwhelmed, I'm going to tell you I'm struggling right now. I might not have the best words to articulate it, but you will know how I'm feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So if I, if I'm hearing correctly, cause you know, I'll be hearing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing knowing your strengths, you know, because yeah. the, the one thing about knowing your why is it doesn't come with a roadmap. You know your why, you know the destination, but you don't necessarily know how you're going to get there. So it's knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, and don't necessarily look at your weaknesses as your downfall, but more so, hey, this is the area that I can ask for help from someone else that that's their strength. Absolutely. Your your why is an extension of your self-concept. Your self-concept is how you see yourself, right? And what you believe about yourself. So if I am in this world on a mission to, you know, help other women be epic, be unforgettable, be undeniable when they walk into a room, you know, be magnetic so that people want to work with them so that they can attract the highest dollars for the things that they do. If that is my, you know, professional, whoa, if that is my, pro- <laughs> like you're doing so good, so good, yeah. Right. If that's my professional kind of goal here, then I have to see myself as that. Exactly. Right. And I heard this really good quote the other day that says, you have to believe in what you don't know. And that's where faith comes from. And so if I know that this is what I'm meant to do, if I know that I am, you know, I'm Cairo's mother, I'm, I know that, right. Row, row, come on. Okay, right. <laughs> He's like, I, my turn to talk. <laughs> yes, he is. We could we call him Consultant Cairo because he he really does um, <laughs> chat all day long. But um, I I think the big thing is when you can understand yourself and you can understand what you are here to do. It makes navigating your purpose right. Yeah. and your power a lot easier and the why is just there as this kind of internal gut check for you to say am I on the right path yeah. right so everything that I do I love what you said about when you saw me on the dance floor and I was showing you a part of life that you weren't showing that's ingrained in my self-concept it's who Shana is I don't have to try to be something I'm not right But by me just showing up and being free and being open and standing in my own power, I'm also giving permission to other women around me to see that that's possible for them. And, you know, sometimes women can be intimidated by me, but I'm like, that's not true intimidation, right? What it is, is that you're either calling yourself to more of yourself, right? And that's the conversation that you're having as you see in the mirror, right oh I'm not being authentic to myself I love that she's just out here being her yeah right so I am always happy to play the role of the person who intimidates you I'm always happy to play the role of the person who you can look up to yeah but also the person who's here to challenge you and I do believe that that's a big part of my work yeah and you know that's the, the word that came to me when I saw or did some introspection was you you activated me essentially and wow. with what I process and how I process things I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily intimidated by anybody or anything so when I saw I was having that reaction I'm like what the hell is going on here right. this does not feel familiar I need to know what's going on so that's when I got to the point I was like hey so she all she's really doing is reflecting to me a part of me and I need to own that part of me so when we had that conversation after I was like This makes total sense now, you know, and I know that that is a part of Epic. So I want you to, I know you mentioned that you had an offer and I wanted to um, have you talk a little Uh, bit more about that. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. We have two really exciting things actually that are, that are happening. Um, Who I would say that, you know, Epic is for, is for, I call them hidden experts. So you're unseen right now. You know that you are you know, somebody dynamic that everybody needs to know, but maybe people don't know who you are. 
And you want to go to being unforgettable. So think about those people who, you know, you walk into a room and you're like, who is that? They leave such an impression on you. And then when you get the opportunity to work with them, it's like, I'm deniable. I need this person in my life. That's the journey that we take our clients on um, in Epic. So um, our big offer, we have two. One is take the stage and I'll be really quick on these. We have one that's take the stage and take the stage is really designed to package your expertise so that we can combat your imposter syndrome that is holding you back. I'm here to remind you of who the F you are. Let me tell you and be very, very honest about that. Um, So that we can go on to charge higher ticket because there's far too many women in business who are under charging and I have no time or patience for it. The second thing is that if you know that you are ready to really step into your epicness and show up this year, then we have um, the Free the Female Retreat where we're going to be working on This being the last year that you don't know how to promote yourself. We're going to do all of your marketing, all of your messaging, all of the big dreaming and working through those money barriers that you have um, out in Honolulu. So for five days, and we're going to do lots of partying as well. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I'm it's it's just so disappointing that this is the first time we're having this conversation and we don't have enough time. (laughs) Yes, I know. But you know what, I'm going to continue this conversation outside of this space, but I just want to, you know, invite everybody else, you know, to definitely check her out. And also remember to visit us in two weeks where, you know, I I hear there's a bit of stigma attached to hypnotherapy. So we're going to break that stigma down. So join us next two weeks, Friday, 2 p.m. Central Time, where we'll be discussing more about hypnotherapy and how safe it is. And just making you feel a little bit more comfortable. So remember, if you can't be kind to others, definitely be kind to yourself because it will actually overflow onto others. But thank you so much for joining us, guys. And thank you so much for being here, Shayna. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. (laughs) Take care. (laughs) Thank you for joining us today on Redefine Your Worthiness with Karel Richards. Join us here in our safe space for real and raw conversations. My mission is to support you at your most vulnerable moments. Together, we will redefine your worthiness to embrace your own path to personal growth. For more information about me, you can visit indivinetime.com. That is I-N-D-I-V-I-N-E-T-H-Y-M-E.com.